Hi, this is Sharon Salzberg. We can practice being with difficult emotions and thoughts, even intense ones, in an open, allowing, and accepting way. For many of us, this is the opposite of the more automatic mode of pushing away uncomfortable feelings out of fear or annoyance, or doing everything we can to avoid painful experiences at whatever cost. We are taught by and large to feel ashamed of our fear or sorrow or anger or sense of vulnerability. So many states tend to be stigmatized by society. It's hard to just allow ourselves to feel them as we cultivate being kinder. Very commonly, when something unpleasant happens, we project it into a seemingly unchanging future. This is going to last forever. This is never going to change. Things will always be this way. Or we might have the habit of creating a whole self-image around it. I'm a bad person. I'm a bad mother because this unwelcome thought is happening in my mind right now. I'm only anxious because I'm incompetent. And the rather ludicrous, I'm the only one who doesn't have it all together. What we're doing in this meditation practice is aimed toward the space between what is actually happening in the moment, even if it's difficult, and what we add to it in terms of future projection or unfairly blaming ourselves or feeling we should be in control of what arises in our minds or creating a solid self-image out of something that is actually impermanent. All of which can add to the stress and challenge we experience. In our practice, we look for these add-ons and see if we can let them go. We can't stop a thought or emotion from arising. No one can. But we can be empowered by our ability to relate to thoughts and emotions in a whole new way. Learning not to buy into them while at the same time not unfairly blaming ourselves for what no one at all can keep from arising. We can have a whole new sense of space and also have greater kindness toward ourselves when these painful things arise. In doing meditation specifically designed to nurture compassion, we silently repeat phrases that aim our hearts towards compassion. You don't have to manufacture a particular emotion. Just gather all of your attention around one phrase at a time. And when your attention wanders, see if you can let go gently and return to the phrases. You can use general loving kindness phrases, such as, may you be safe, be happy, be healthy, live with ease. Or as an alternative, you might choose to repeat phrases, and it can be just one or two, implicitly or explicitly acknowledging difficulty or struggle, such as, may you be free of suffering, or may you find peace, or may you open to pain with presence and compassion, or may you open to both pain and pleasure with an open heart. It's important that the phrase be meaningful to you. 
Sometimes people feel more comfortable using a phrase that implies the wish for a more loving acceptance of pain rather than freedom from pain. Remember, we're not trying to cultivate aversion to painful states, but rather surround those states with an abundance of compassion. You should experiment with different phrases, seeing which ones support a compassionate opening to pain and which ones seem to lead you more in the direction of aversion or grief. During the instruction, when I become silent, that is your signal to put into practice what I've just suggested. Sit comfortably, eyes open or closed, and begin silently repeating the phrases you've chosen. No more than three or four, perhaps as few as one. The first recipient of the compassion meditation is a friend who's struggling right now in some way. Perhaps they seem to feel lost or alone. This should be a real person, not just a symbolic aggregate of the difficulties in life. Spend some time directing general loving kindness phrases toward this person, like, may you be safe, be happy, be healthy, live with ease, or whatever phrases you feel drawn to. Or you can experiment with using a phrase specific to this exercise, like may you be free of suffering, or may you find peace. May you open to pain with presence and compassion. May you open to both pain and pleasure with an open heart. You can get an image of this person or say their name to yourself. Get a feeling for their presence and offer phrases of compassion toward them. If you feel yourself moving from the trembling of the heart that is compassion into states of fear, despair, or sorrow, first of all, accept that this is natural. Breathe softly. And use your awareness of the breath to anchor yourself in this moment. reach underneath the fear or rejection of pain to the realization that pain is something we all share. It has the potential to help us see our essential oneness that underlies it. You can reflect on that sense of oneness and feel less alone. Now think of a strength your friend has, maybe a sense of humor or kindness towards others, perhaps a source of resilience or a specific action where they cared about someone else. Bring a greater fullness of awareness of them as a person larger than just their difficulty or challenge. Offer loving kindness to that person, represented in the larger view. And then oneself. This is being a really good friend to oneself. First, repeat phrases toward yourself, fully acknowledging your difficulties or struggles. May I be safe, be happy, be healthy, live with ease. 
or phrases like, may I be free of suffering or may I find peace? May I open to pain with presence and compassion? May I open to both pain and pleasure with an open heart? Then reflect on a strength that you have. If you can't in the moment, think of them. One is that you're willing to explore some difficult emotional terrain. Have some understanding that compassion is a way to freedom. Care about well-being. These are great strengths. Maybe you have a good sense of humor besides. And for the last few minutes of the sitting, you can be spontaneous. Just see who comes to mind. Someone you care about deeply, someone you have difficulty with, a stranger, someone you just met. You might not know a strength of theirs, but we can practice the first part of the exercise with them. Allow them to arise in your awareness one at a time and make the offering of loving kindness to them, people, animals, whoever it might be. 